designers and geeks. Uh, empathy and design. Closer, can you hear me? All right. All right, so hi, I'm Melissa. I'm a designer at Wano. Um, and I just want to preface with the fact that I am not a UX designer. Um, I'm not a product designer. And I only say that because a lot of the conversations with empathy are usually around users, user testing, mental models, all that's super important, like we just heard. And it's really valuable for making sure products um, are making positive impacts in people's lives. But my focus is just a little different. I am a brand designer. Um, I'm also a motion designer. And brand can be a little bit different um, to design because it's something that has to be lived by the people in the organizations. Um, that's why it's called brand identity. It's something that the employees take on and the leaders of the companies uh, project out to the rest of the world. So uh, for me, this talk is going to be more about um, finding authenticity and meaning in your work by collaborating with your clients very closely. All right, so I want to start with the opposite of empathy, which is apathy. Um, all right, so I love living in California, but I hate working in tech. That's something that I find I say a lot to people, um, <laughs> having <laughs> lived my whole life in the Bay Area. Um, I went to design school in New York, and New, you know, New York is the creative capital of the world. It has art, design, all the things that I'm just naturally, magnetically attracted to. Um, so sometimes when I think about working in tech, it feels a little bit limiting. Um, it was definitely a shock to me when I moved back to SF, um, and I was having a hard time getting excited about the work that I was doing. And it really, like, my creative output took a hit, um, and my energy and enthusiasm also did as well. But don't get me wrong, I love technology. I use Lyft every day, Yelp. Uh, Preeti just told us all the amazing things One Medical is doing, so that's not what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is the pervasive move fast and break things mentality, um, a certain level of homogen <laughs> homogeneity, um, and a lot of folks that are out there just trying to solve the wrong problems. <laughs> Really, it's kind of that Silicon Valley as a show is becoming all too real. <laughs> so I think that this is symptomatic of a lack of empathy. The word empathy has kind of become a super buzzy word, just like um, you know, disruption, agile, all of those. Um, and I think just because design thinkers are you know, having empathy written in their articles, or teaching it in courses, I don't think it means that it's necessarily always happening. We could always use more of it. Um, I noticed this with myself, and that's where all of this is gonna start. It's gonna start sounding a little self-referential. Um, I noticed that I was starting to write clients off in my early, like, first couple years um, back in SF. I started thinking that they were all the same. Um, when I started projects and it was a tech company, I started you know, just thinking like, they're gonna want the same thing, they're gonna want uh, a bright color, a nice sans serif, like people smiling in all the photos. And I just started becoming a little jaded. Um, and that's, that's rude of me, first of all. <laughs> and it's really demotivating um, as a designer. It doesn't make you excited to get up and go to work. Um, I think another thing was that I wasn't super confident um, in proposing something that I thought if it wasn't safe, it was going to be immediately shot down by the client and that was gonna bruise my ego. So empathy requires effort. It's a responsibility that you take on as a designer. Um, I have to check my ego <laughs> every time I start a project. It's not about what I'm making, it's about what they need and what we're putting out into the world. So um, that's one part of it. And the other part is just straight up listening um, paying attention when you're in client meetings, reading their verbal cues and their physical cues. If they tense up to a certain word or you show an image and they light up, those are th certain things that if you're just not paying attention or you're not absorbing, you're not putting yourself in their place. So every project starts with what they know and what we know. Um, of course, a lot of our clients have a deep knowledge in their industry and they're really close to their subject matter, so they're experts. But on the other hand, we're hired for a reason. We have design capabilities and the outside perspective that they might be looking for. So it might be 
obvious, but the good stuff happens somewhere in the middle. Um, I've gotten a lot better and a lot of practice um, at listening and collaborating closely with clients at Weno. It's kind of our thing. <laughs> we definitely sell um, a close collaboration with our clients as part of our process. Um, and I've gen generally noticed that we're brought on, especially with tech projects, to bring a certain humanity to the, uh, to the brand and also to create something that's really relatable, something that comes maybe more naturally to designers or visual people just because it's such an immediate, um, immediate reaction. So I'll take you through a case study. Um, so seeing empathy in our design, pro uh, our design process in practice. Rebranding Noodle AI. Okay, so this is not a ramen robot. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> yes, I thought that was what it was when I first got pre uh, prepped on the project. But uh, in all seriousness, I mean, I was skeptical because I'd worked on projects in the past that AI had been kind of slapped on to design concepts to make them seem smarter. Uh, AI assistants. I'm kind of only thinking in the realm of like the Alexas and the Google assistants of the world. So Noodle was my first project at Weno, um, and I decided, you know, it's a fresh start, and it's a totally new team that I'm working with. It's a totally new way of doing things. We're working really close with the client. I, I should be open. This is the original brand and site. This isn't the work that we did. This is work that we inherited. Um, and from the general sense of it, I went through their site. I got that it was about algorithms, helping businesses, but I didn't really see the larger picture. Um, one thing that did stand out to me was their voice and their name. Noodle is referential to using your noodle. So, you know, smart, smart tech. And they had a lot of like mathematical puns. Uh, actually, the headline on there says, AI is not magic, it's just math. So there were some things that we had to um, address. And we definitely took the time to immerse ourselves with the team. We did a lot of research going in. And I'm going to do my best just um, for the sake of time to give you an overview of what they do. Um, Noodle AI is like a suite of products that they use in huge industries. I'm talking like large enough industries that directly impact the global economy um, and the environment. Think like steel mills or global um, cosmetic companies, stuff like that. So all of their products have to be moved, shipped, stored, and eventually sold. And that takes a lot of like coordination and resources to do all of that. So Noodle, using real-time data from sensors, databases, constantly updating um, learning algorithms, they figure out things, um, they figure out patterns to help leaders predict um, things like quality control, energy usage, things that could really make a big impact. Um, we are obviously also briefed on the technical aspects. This is me in an immersion session um, with their CTO trying to tell me how everything works, and <laughs> I did my very, very best. Um, but at the end of all of this, we still needed, it wasn't enough to just build the brand. We needed to know the emotional part, why the employees woke up every day, went to work, and felt like they wanted to be a part of Noodle AI. And there was a pivotal moment in this workshop, and it was when the CEO himself said, and I kid you not, he said, I, I want to save the world. Um, old me, unempathetic me, uh, would think that that was just Silicon Valley hyperbole, like roll my eyes. But then he told us about this something like 97 million tons of emissions um, that are created by cargoless trucks going to and from plants and warehouses in this huge supply chain, and how Noodle's tools actually could optimize cases like this and eliminate enormous amounts of CO2. That's just one example. So it was a kind of scale that I just like couldn't wrap my head around, and I didn't understand how, it was, how important it was because I wasn't as invested at the time as a CEO. But once we heard that, we understood why they didn't lead with that first, why they were leading with math. He was hesitant to put that message out because he didn't know if it would inspire business owners. It wasn't exactly focused on profits. But we found it to be the most authentic and humanizing element, and it deserved to be championed. 
So that's how we began to frame everything going forward in the rebrand. Um, we even got to use some Ansel Adams inspired photography to reinforce the environmental approach. Shout out to Gene Ross, this is one of his photos. Um, we did make sure that the messaging, however, was not just greenwashing and it um, had multiple meanings. So imagine a world without waste refers to wasted resources, the world's resources, but it also refers to wasted time, money, people's talent, things that business leaders care about at the end of the day. For the logo, we could agree that everyone wanted to be clever still, they were the math punny people who thought of Noodle, but they wanted to be professional and grown up. They were really competing with lead people like IBM, um, IBM Watson. So for the update, we, we created a very machined technical um, uh, mon <laughs> sorry, uh, monogram and clean type. Um, and if you look closely enough, the end looks like AI. For color, we abandoned the expected tech blue that you see in a lot of um, early tech startups. Um, and instead, we derived the color palette directly from the industries that Noodle serves, um, making it immediately relatable on a human level. So there's, you know, packed warehouses, steel mills, all of, this ha all of them have this, like, factory yellow, and that played a huge role in the entire branding system. Radical efficiency became the official rallying cry, um, something that people at Noodle could really hang their hats on. Uh, it speaks not only to the paradigm shift that Noodle brings to these industries, but it's also a nod to their math humor. It cycles through a bunch of custom gifts or custom glyphs that we created, um, which of course includes a radical symbol or you know a square root. For context, here's what it looks like in the site, and I would say go to the actual site. It's much more fun to click around these interactive um, modules and take a deeper look, but it helps educate people on the impact that Noodle um, has on the whole environment. At the end of the day, I even got to animate something that spanned three monitors in their office when they redesigned. Um, it was something that I definitely wasn't expecting to come out of this project, but it, it was really rewarding to me on just like a plain designer level. <clears throat> And we'll skip through it, but you get the idea. Thanks. <laughs> the moral of this story is that I found myself getting really interested in a world that I really had no stake in to begin with. The client was super happy. We went to their uh, rebrand party and everything was decked out in factory yellow. And I felt like I was making a meaningful, meaningful contribution and that they were actually doing some real good. So some takeaways from my talk my personal ones. Um, not all tech is boring or evil. Um, and if it does start looking that way, you should be asking the questions um, in those initial meetings to see what they're really about. And if you are privileged enough, you should choose clients that are doing some good. Clients can surprise you. Our best insight for the strategy came from the CEO. And it would have been different if we came down like we were coming down from the mountaintop and had the answers and solutions. You need to be able to listen, and you need to be able to absorb what they're telling you. You were hired for a reason, though. So if they had all the answers, they would have just done it themselves. They're inviting us in to listen, to immerse ourselves, but then also to bring an outsider perspective. Remember, the good stuff happens when it overlaps. So we were there to help them when they were too close to the details to help them find their North Star. Lastly, enthusiasm is contagious. So just as with empathy, you can relate to someone when they're going through something hard or when um, they're light up a room, it was that moment in the initial immersion that we saw the kind of passion the CEO had and it really ignited something in the design process. I no longer was thinking, man, tech is so annoying. I was thinking about the big picture and I was inspired to do more. That's it. Thank you.